What's up guys, True Crime King back. Um, going back to the Koberger case for a little bit. We're gonna uh, watch a video from, and the former FBI agent is going to discuss the connection between Koberger and the victims. Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, and Ethan. Ethan. So, let's see what he's got to say. Hit that like and subscribe, and here we go. There are some new details coming out tonight about alleged reports surrounding the Idaho murder suspect. Early this week, People Magazine reported that Koberger ate at a restaurant where two of the victims worked as waitresses. News Nation spoke with Steve Helling, a senior crime writer for People yesterday. This is what he had to say. You know, whether or not his paths crossed with the girls there and whether or not that's where it started, that's something that the cops would know for sure. But we know for sure that he ate there at least twice. But now the Mad Greek restaurant is rejecting reports that alleged killer Brian Koberger dined there shortly before the murders. In a Facebook post, the restaurant saying, quote, this will be my only response to the story from people. It is not true. Okay, so... We have Mad Greek coming out and saying that it's not true. Mad Greek themselves saying that Brian Koberger never ate there. I guess people uh, are trying to come up with some kind of connection. Uh, and, you know, they can't find one, I guess. And they're trying to say that because he may he maybe he was a vegan uh and mad greek isn't even a vegan restaurant they i mean they do serve some vegan dishes right but uh yeah koberger he won't even eat anything if something has been used or to touch me right so yeah but uh, yeah let's see what else i got now, this comes as new documents released this week show a laundry list of items seized from Koberger's home. This includes a red stained pillow, mattress covers, along with nitrile gloves and receipts. The release of that information came after the judge in the case expanded a gag order on who can and cannot speak to the media. And it now includes the victim's families and their attorneys. So we want to bring in Tracy Walder here, former CIA officer and FBI special agent. Tracy, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Natasha. Good to see you. Good to see you. What was your reaction after hearing the Mad Greek restaurant is rejecting the notion that Koberger dined there? You know, part of me thought, okay, well, this is just false reporting then on behalf of People Magazine. But then I realized that there is a gag order in place. And, you know, if information did get out, there could be legal consequences for that. And also, it can affect the ultimate prosecution of Brian Koberger. And so part of me wonders if the owner is trying to sort of walk that back a little bit. So that that's really where my thoughts were. Interesting. And we've also heard in reports that the alleged killer attempted to message one of the victims on social media. What are your thoughts on this? So interestingly, I don't I don't make a tremendous amount out of it. You know, I, I get messages uh, to my social media that I don't necessarily know that I have um, because, you know, if you go into Instagram, you actually have to physically look at those message requests. And so whichever victim that he did message, um, it, it could be two reasons. It could be one they really wanted nothing to do with him or the second reason could be they had really no idea um, that he had sent them a message request. But what it does. Yeah, well, I don't know. I I have Instagram, and yeah, for some people, like if you have a certain privacy settings, you do have to go in to hit the request button. But if you use Instagram as much as they were using it, you know, I'm sure I'm sure they they looked at uh, you know their message requests, right? I don't know. I mean, why would why would you never look at your message request? But uh, that's my opinion. But. Does point to is the fact that Koberger did, in a way, sort of have that tertiary contact. But we do know for a fact he did message uh, at least two of these girls on Instagram, right? So if there is a connection, then maybe they did talk on Instagram or online. But, uh, yeah, 
the Mad Greek uh, can be ruled out right now. I mean, you just heard it from Mad Greek themselves, right? Um, with one of the victims and perhaps made more out of that contact than perhaps they did. At this point, do you think that he specifically targeted one or more of the victims? You know, I, I always, you know, hate to hypothesize. I, I personally do think that he targeted one of the victims. Um, I've, I've kind of maintained that uh, from the beginning. And my biggest reason, and I think Mr. Consalves said this, was that he didn't have to go upstairs. That's really my biggest sort of indicator as to why I do think that he targeted one of the victims. That's incredibly risky um, to do, and it really accelerated his chances of ultimately being caught. Yeah, that, well, that does make kind of some sense, though, because, you know, he 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 killed everybody on the day that, you know, Kaylee wasn't going to be back again, right? So this was like his last chance, kind of with the, like that Stephen McDaniel case, you know, the girl he killed, Lauren, was moving the next day. So really, it was either now or never, and I guess he he chose now, so... Now, if he, if it is found that he was DMing or trying to message these victims, can the prosecution use any of this against Koberger going forward? Yes, I would imagine so, because what it does is it, po it, it really kind of points to his premeditation. So if you look at sort of that laundry list of things that was found in his apartment, um, things like receipts, which I know not a lot has been made out of those, but those all point to things like premeditation. If he went and purchased things beforehand, that shows that he really was planning this. And it's the same thing um, with those, those direct message requests. Um, was he targeting someone? Was he planning this? All of those things, in my opinion, point to the premeditation of this crime. And what are your thoughts regarding the items removed from COVID? Burger's home in that newly released search warrant. Yeah, so the, the reality is, is it was obviously such a gruesome crime scene and such a bloody crime scene that he had to have taken something with him. I don't care if he wore, you know, the full painter suit into that. And what I saw that was the most interesting to me were, were actually some of the hairs um, that were recovered and then the um, kind of swatches of pillowcases. That... Well, my thing is, why didn't Dylan you know, tell the police that he took some stuff, right? Because we know he took some this stuff because it was at his house. And Dylan saw him leave, right? Why didn't, uh, you know, and, and she saw him good enough to see his eyebrows. Why didn't she say that he had this something in his hand or this or whatever, you know? It's, I don't know. It's kind of weird were also recovered and so I'm wondering if from those things they're going to able, be able to actually place the forensic evidence of the victims um, into his apartment so that was one of the bigger uh, takeaways for me from that that and one last question for you Tracy the gag order is extensive from this judge we now know, know that more than 20 news organizations including the Associated Press are forming a coalition they're asking the judge to narrow this order why uh, have such an extensive gag order? Is this the right thing for the judge to do? You know, this is unusual. Obviously, to your point, it is incredibly extensive and it's incredibly broad. I really haven't seen media reaction um, like this before. I do think that it is very large reaching. I think one of the things that the judge is trying to do is to, there's a lot of online discussion and a lot of online chatter um, about this case. And he doesn't want anything sort of tainting that pool um, of, of the prosecution of the case. And I understand it from that perspective. Um, however, I do think Think that this is a bit of an of an overreach and especially how it affects the victims and their the victims families and their ability to talk about this case right, Tracy. well yeah that's about it but uh, you know the media has to bring uh, things like this up like like the mag rake has to respond because there's there's people on YouTube like you know that just gobble and gobble and uh, you know, just make up stuff to try and get views, right? You, you, they're not just going with the facts and, and going from there or the evidence, right? They're just trying to make something up to get views and likes. And then the media has to respond because people believe it so much. 
But that's my take. That's my opinion. And I'm allowed to have it. So until next time, True Crime King, out.